The kids sat cross-legged on the living room floor, their three eyes blinking expectantly. Well, two eyes for Trixie and four for Morvax, who always had to have one more than everyone else. Their father cleared his throat with a theatrical ahem. All right, kiddos, settle in. Let me tell you the story of how I met your mother. Now, you might have heard the official version, all the sanitized military reports and the videos that skip over the, uh, colorful details. But that's not how it happened, not really. This story has guts, glory, and above all, a reptilian warlord named Splark, the Spleen Crusher. And there I was, pinned down with just a handful of the worst battle-scarred, caffeine-deprived humans you've ever met, on a rocky spit of land affectionately known as Planet HLG-79. The locals called it, and I kid you not, soggy place. It was as miserable as it sounds. The ground squelched, the air smelled like overcooked broccoli, and there were precisely two colors on the whole miserable planet, brown and beige. The kids leaned forward, and their father continued, his eyes glazing over with the memories. So picture it. We're defending a colony of Viglatrons. You know, big floaty blue blobs, looked like jellyfish in hats, and talked like they were holding cocktail parties, even as they screamed for their lives. They weren't much good in a fight, mind you unless you consider making fancy tentacle finger sandwiches a combat skill. Trixie's eyes shone. What happened next, Dad? Oh, right. So here we are, dug in, the last pocket of resistance. The battle was supposed to last a couple of hours, tops. But we were running on day 11. 11 days of combat rations, sleep deprivation, and getting increasingly nostalgic about the simple joys of you know, breathable air. The reptilians, the Hargokas, as they like to call themselves, were closing in. And I remember one of the guys, Corporal Flynn, stood up and says, well, if they're gonna kill us, I'm putting in my last meal request now. I want a bacon sandwich, extra crispy, with a side of irony. Then, as if summoned by sheer bravado, we heard the Hargoka commander, this Splark, the spleen crusher, over the comms. Prepare to be annihilated, humans. You have two minutes to surrender before we make you into scaly snack packs. Now, I know, that sounds intimidating, but I'd gotten sort of used to the Hargokas by then. Their threats were predictable. Annihilate, splatter, eradicate. They had a bit of a one-track mind, and for the record, None of us even had spleens anymore, thanks to the last planet's crazy fungi. Then it happened, kids. The clouds parted. Or maybe I just hallucinated it after that much combat rations. Hard to say. Anyway, she arrived, floating down with her squad, an angel with an anti-grav propulsion pack and about 12,000 laser cannons. I was trying to look brave, facing death and all that, and then, in walks... Your mother, fearless, glorious, and shooting at anything that even looked remotely like it might consider resembling a lizard. I swear it was love at first explosion. Trixie sighed. Aw, oh, romantic. Oh, it was... and terrifying. While I was still gawking, she vaporized an entire Hagakan platoon with her Phase Five disintegrator. Then, as the smoke cleared, she turned to me and yelled, Because of the battle noise, you know. Are you lot the humans too stubborn to run? And being the dashing figure I am, I said, Only when there's a lady worth impressing. And I must have impressed her, because here we are now, with you two. Then what happened? asked Morvax. Well, once the Hargakas realized they were outmatched, they ran faster than an accountant on payday. We regrouped, secured the colony, and I finally got to properly meet your mother. And to think, it only took a planet-wide invasion, a few thousand close calls, and some very questionable lunch-meat rations to get there. 
So, Dad? Morvax asked, his third and fourth eyes blinking mischievously. Are you still afraid of Mom? Their father paused. Look, your mother saved us all that day, and she'll always be my hero. But I'll never forget the first thing she said to me after the dust settled. She looked me square in the eyes and said, Next time, try ducking. And that, kids, is how I met your mother. Their dad smirked, raising an eyebrow at their skepticism. Oh, you want more, do you? All right, all right. But don't say I didn't warn you. This gets a bit, well, explosive. The kids cheered and shuffled even closer, clearly ready for the extended, unfiltered edition. Right. So, after the Hargokas scrambled and the battlefield was mostly quiet, I looked around, dazed and, frankly, smelling like burnt socks. And there she was, talking to her squad and looking like the most beautiful person I'd ever seen. You know, despite the fact she was covered head to toe in anti-blaster armor and holding a plasma rifle that was still smoking. Ah, romance. You mean love at first laser cannon? Trixie giggled. Exactly. I was trying to think of something charming to say, something that'd really get her attention. I'd barely opened my mouth to deliver what I was sure was going to be the line of the century, something like, Hey, nice weaponry, babe, when your mother, out of nowhere, pointed her rifle right at my face. The kids gasped, wide-eyed. Yes, yes, it was rather alarming. So with a stiff upper lip and maybe one or two panic sweats, I managed a, Hello there, to which she replied, I don't have time for small talk. Can you shoot straight? Well, he continued, scratching his chin dramatically, I could tell she wasn't the type to be wooed with mere words, so I figured I'd impress her the old-fashioned way, by not dying. Next thing I knew, she'd yanked me by the collar and thrown me into the cover of a crater, while she yelled orders like it was just another Tuesday. Her team was some super-elite squadron of the Epsilon Alliance, top of the top, tech so advanced, it made our gear look like children's toys. So there we are, pinned in this crater, just us, her squad, and a handful of my scrappy half-starved platoon. And of course, the Hargokas were coming back for one last hurrah. I was ready to tell her, look, if I'm going to die, I at least want to know the name of the person standing on my foot. She smirked, actually smirked, and said, It's Commander Zara Talrock, and if you survive this, you can try buying me a drink. Well, what could I do? I'm a sucker for a challenge. The kids leaned in, hooked. Anyway, the Hagokas finally returned, with Splark, the Spleen Crusher, leading the charge personally, holding this ridiculous double-edged plasma axe. Two heads looked like something out of a heavy metal album. And Zara, ah, your mother, that is, just gave him a bored look. She had this way of making even a galactic warlord feel like he was about as threatening as a wet sponge. Then what did she do? Morvax asked, eyes glinting. Oh, she walked out into the open, nonchalant as you like, and pulled out this tiny, sleek device. It was no bigger than your mother's thumb, but when she pressed it, well, let's just say it made Splark, the spleen crusher's very large spleen, look rather unnecessary. The entire Hargoka army froze in shock. And then she yelled at me, again, that it was time to move, and she hauled me by my collar like I was a lost kitten. I was a soldier, mind you, a professional, but she did it so effortlessly. And so, he continued with a grin, we cleared out the last of the Hagokas. Your mother commandeered their entire supply of their ship's quantum-boosted lemonade, which, I should note, was absolutely vile but very energizing, and by the end, the humans and Viglatrons were dancing, toasting to our survival. 
I don't remember the details too well. Could have been the quantum lemonade. But somewhere in the middle of the victory celebrations, I found myself giving her my calm ID, which I'd very gallantly written on the back of a soggy ration wrapper. The kids roared with laughter. Turns out she thought I was cute in an idiotic, is he going to survive this sort of way? And well, after a few follow-up battles, a few thousand more alien invasions, and maybe just one or two misunderstandings involving diplomatic incidents, eventually I convinced her I was worth keeping around. Morvax rolled all four eyes, grinning. Dad, are you telling us you accidentally made Mom fall in love with you? Hey, I like to think it was more of a charm by osmosis situation. But she kept saving my life, and I kept surviving. So eventually, well, she got used to me. And there you have it. The long, detailed, absolutely true story of how I met your mother. The kids gave a standing ovation, clapping and whistling. Dad, that was amazing, said Trixie. But are you really sure that's what happened? Kids, the actual official reports all called it a standard operation. Standard. Not a mention of the spleen crushing or the crater huddling or anything. This, my dear children, is the truth. And in a whisper, as if revealing the galaxy's greatest secret, he added, And don't ever tell your mother how much of an impression she made when she pointed that rifle at me. She still got that look in her eye. Just as the kids were finishing their applause, the door slid open with a soft whoosh. There stood their mother, Commander Zara Talrock herself, looking as composed and formidable as ever, arms crossed, eyebrow raised. I hope you haven't told them too much about how we met, she said in her no-nonsense, slightly intimidating tone. And I assume you left out the gory details. The kids burst into laughter as their dad shot them a mischievous look. Gory details? I wouldn't dream of it. Just a little wholesome recount of, you know, love explosions, spleen crushing, and slightly singed rations. But Zara wasn't buying it. Oh, really? she said with a smirk. Because I have very clear memories of someone screaming, save me, while attempting to hide behind a Viglatron's tentacle. Before he could protest, she lunged, tackling him in one smooth motion, sending him to the floor with a whump. The kids shrieked with laughter as she expertly pinned him down, her knee on his chest and a triumphant grin on her face. Still got it, she said, giving the kids a wink. A true warrior knows when to strike. Flat on his back and tapping the floor in mock surrender, he choked out. See, kids, I always let your mother win. Makes us a good team. Their mother laughed, shaking her head. In your dreams, Buttercup, and I will be using that move later tonight. Zara shot a playful wink to the dad, who winked back. The kids could hardly breathe from laughing as their dad attempted to roll out from under her, and she graciously allowed him up, brushing off his shirt with an affectionate, if slightly smug, pat. Trixie wiped her eyes still giggling. Mom, you really are amazing. Dad barely stood a chance. Zara ruffled Trixie's hair and winked. That's why he's kept me around. Besides, I needed someone to keep things interesting, and it takes a special kind of human to stay put and keep fighting while the whole galaxy's going up in flames. She looked at her husband with a glint in her eye, and he shrugged with a lopsided grin. Special or stubborn? Can't say for sure. But it worked out, didn't it? Yeah, I suppose it did, she said, smiling as she pulled him close. And if we've learned anything, it's that when things get tough, 
The only thing to do is hold on tight and have each other's back. Or, he said, giving her a playful nudge, tackle each other to the floor when it's least expected. The kids giggled, wrapping their arms around their parents as they all settled into a cozy pile on the floor, feeling like the strongest, silliest, most unstoppable team in the galaxy. <laughs>